Welcome back once again to Spirituality with a Spin. I am Ryan Keyes, your host, and please hit the subscribe button and the bell beside it so you get a notification when we are online and active. Follow me across the board if you want to keep in touch daily and get daily inspiration. Also, 10,000 people listened and only 1,000 people liked. Just throw up a sign, send up a signal flare, say, hey, I hear you, I see you, I understand. I got something out of this. It helps me to help you because then I know if I'm on the right track helping you to help yourself. I am an alarm clock at the crossroad. I am a signpost on your path to help you on your passion. It helps to know how you feel. Please leave a comment down below if you would like anything talked about in future shows. Also, I have a great discussion group that you can get into and get involved and ask questions there with a wonderful support group of people, safe space, safe, unbiased place of love. Before I go into day, today's message, I wanted to read two things. The first one is from the high tide in Tucson by Barbara Kingsover. And this is really a, a, a wonderful poetic look at finding love because the thing about love we're falling in it and out of it on a consistent momentary basis because we are looking at love from the level of how much we work on it not how much it exists in the world and it's tough it's tough for me it's tough for you it's been an entirely tough year 2017 was a knee knocker we were on our knees trying to break that soil trying to get that soil done so we could plant those soul seeds for 2018. All of the people with the Twin Flame community, the soulmate searchers, the divine partner path has been difficult. Many people are encountering a catalyst of change. And I myself am trying to evolve the conversation into a different direction to pull away from as many identifiers and labels as possible and put us on the path, the proper path of understanding how love has no limits, but the limitations we're setting on how much love we're entertaining in our life and we're evolving with comes from the actual work of a relationship an interrelationship, which love flourishes from this, but it's not founded on this. And this is where we hear the turn the other cheek concept. This is where we hear the in the world, but not of the world concept. And we're going to dive into that a little bit today, but let me read this by Barbara Kingslover. In my own worst seasons, I've come back from the colorless world of despair by forcing myself to look hard for a long time at a single glorious thing, a flame of red geranium outside my bedroom window, and then another my daughter in a yellow dress, and another, the perfect outline of a full dark sphere behind a crescent moon. Until I learned to be in love with myself again, like a stroke victim retaining new parts of the brain to grasp lost skills, I have taught myself joy over and over again. I got goosebumps, I got chills, that really sits in my heart. The search. We're searching for something that is born inside of us because we don't believe that it's there. We've been nudged, we've been told no, we've been pushed, we've been slowed, we've been not allowed to grow in the proper way. Was it with malice? Not necessarily. Someone's truth, someone's involvement may or may not be what we believe. For instance, we see a program that's being developed, the money's not going there. But perhaps the people that are raising the money believe the money is needed somewhere else. But we don't know. All we can do is ask and not accuse. Because when we become the accuser, we've already accepted the fate of not allowing love to be unlimited in our life. Another quote, which I really, really love. In the end, the feminine search for love and the masculine search for freedom reach the same destination the unbounded and infinite ground of being who you are, which is both absolute love and freedom. And I love this author, Dave Dita, The Way of the Superior Man. 
I really love some of the things that he talks about. And I feel that it's very apropos for this development of self-love. And when you hear self-love, when you hear self-acceptance, when you hear self-esteem, you think self, 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 me, 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 very self-centered, very egotistical, very narcissistic, very overwhelmingly centered on self. How can that be healthy? We need to be the we, and we do. But remember, we're the wave individually. But as a group, we are the water. We are the ocean. The ocean causes the motion of the wave. The wave doesn't create the motion. Do you feel? So the ocean creates the motion to send the wave to have its experience. So the group, the collective, the congregation, the culmination, this is where that energy for your experience is generated. And then we evolve in our experience as a force of the group. So self-love is connected to the self-interest of the entire populace. This is why they say an awakened man sees an awakened world. An enlightened being sees an enlightened world. To save yourself saves the world around you because you've changed how you see yourself and others will see you in a different light because you are working on the internal ideas. This hundred-year journey for the soul for the connection of the source and through your spirit. Sometimes we don't want to hear it. Sometimes we don't want to believe that love is coexistent in all things. But I'll tell you, as I've said it before, the open door and the closed door are an opportunity. And every opportunity is an opportunity to love. The open door, birth, when the baby busts through and screams and bellows out into the world and says, I am here. The closed door, as the being gently puts their hand on the door and pulls it shut behind them as they cross over into the next experience. Such is life. It's not about loss. It's not about losing. It's about allowing. It's not about fighting. It's about finding. It's not about saving. It's about seeing. To see these things, to allow these things, to evolve through this open door and closing the door. You need to be able to see yourself. Suffering is a tool to see yourself in any experience, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, or vibrational. Suffering is a way for you to see source in your experience. Suffering has become a source of seeing your true self. When you study a course in college, do you know how you know and you learned it? Because you take a test. Your test gives you a chance to prove your best, to prove whether you took all that information and incorporated it into your essence. When life gives you a test, this is the moment for you to shine, the moment to say everything that has gone through my mind, body, and soul is here in this bowl of life, ready to be poured out and flourish on that soul soil. And this is why I created the 21 days. This is why I'm expanding the 21 days into working women and for mommies, and then to an evolution of self-intimacy through the 21 days. We need something different. We need a different angle to help everybody. Because some people are at different places, pushing through different barriers. And I've now seen that. I've seen some people don't want to be leaders. Some people just want to experience, and that's okay. You don't have to believe you need to step up to change the world. But don't stop working where you are. Don't stop working on who you are. This is the key core secret to the entire Twin Flame evolution. The entire soulmate search. This is the purpose of the divine partnership and a path. It's a path to freedom. Freedom not to free the world. Because the world takes care of itself. The world is unlimited source. The world is the ocean creating the motion for the waves to hit the shore. The world doesn't need a watchman. We watch over ourselves 
and we change our life. And we put our mask on first so that we can save the people to our right or to our left, not ten seats up ahead or ten seats behind. Because if we save the person to our left, they save the person to their left, and so on, and so goes the flow. If you don't, you stop the flow. And then you're fighting to stay in a position. When you don't go with life's energetic movement, you're either swimming upstream trying to change it and rearrange it, but it won't work. Or you are sitting in it, trying to stay stationary, using all your energy, all your effort, not to be budged, not to move. You're not in the groove, my friend. And get in the groove... You start to move, you start to feel, you start to flow. And even if life gets tough, even if life gets torrid, you move through those rapids and you come to that stillness on the other side and you relax and you just float in that flow and you let go and you say, I made it through. And you have this newfound elevation of confidence and connection to yourself because you have passed the test. You did your best. Pass or fail doesn't matter. Doing your best, pushing forward, going through, being the wave. You're not being moved separately. You are a wheel within a wheel. Your test, your struggle, your strife, your suffering is the ocean generating the wave as you crash on the shore. And then you glide up the shore of life as far as you can touching the sand, and then you are gently pulled back as the door closes behind you to return to the source, to become a wave on another shore someday. So let us talk about self-esteem. A lot of people believe this is the basis of worth. This is the approval-seeking situation, the validation of others, the opinions that people have of you, whether they're high or low. This is based on how far you go. This is self-esteem, where you take the ups and downs to shape your world around. Many have this false sense of unrealistic expectation. They see themselves and they don't really see themselves. The image that they're seeing is not the truth. I myself have been guilty of this, and I believe that my skin cancer battle helps me to maintain the trueness of seeing my personification of self, to keep humble, to stay whole, because I'm not perfect. I am not anyone special except to me. I am only a messenger with a message, and this is the message. Never look to the man. Look to the message. Never follow the leader, follow your truth. The leader will close the door behind them one day, but the message shall continue. As Shakespeare said, there is nothing new under the sun that hasn't been said before. Open door. Pulling the door behind you for the next person to be that voice crying out in the wilderness. And for those of you that are new to this, I remind you, this is a show. This is a situation where we sit down and we listen. This isn't top ten. This isn't an elevation of what to do, when to do it, and let me break it down simply. This is a show to sit down so you can contemplate and see yourself and have a chance to marinate and to chew things so that you can digest different opinions and perspectives. So we know self-esteem is about public material, that self-concept that's supported by society. And the biggest obstacle to self-esteem is self-criticism. Your own worst voice, your worst enemy, the voice inside. And that's due to the lack of love, the lack of being able to see the ocean inside of you. You're only looking at the crest of the wave and judging how big it is, how bad it is, how furious, how formidable. Not understanding that each wave has an entire world behind it. Every wave is wonderful. Then we roll into self-acceptance. Because unlike self-esteem, self-acceptance is unconditional. Self-acceptance is how you see your flaws and your failures and the things that limit you. And you love them. And you let go of this judgment. And instead of comparing yourself to someone else, you see the positive and the negative. You allow this individuality to overwhelm your decision so that you're able to... Forge a foundation based on your strengths first. 
As I said, no New Year's resolution. Forget that. We want a new revolution, not looking for a solution. We want to focus on the things that make us strong, and then the weakness will minimize. After self-acceptance, when you start to accept yourself, like in mirror work on day one, when you look at yourself naked and unafraid, and you begin to see the inner rather than the outer, you relax into the art of loving yourself. And then you trip into this beautiful chasm, this wonderful, this expanse of nourishing, of self-love. Self-love. You put a little action, a little satisfaction. You put a little ocean motion in it. You put a little emotion behind it. And contrary to what a lot of people believe, self-love is actually very good for you. Self-love is that superpower, just like vulnerability. Because it's not selfish, it's not self-indulgent, it's not egotistical, it's not narcissistic. It's an appreciation of all that rolls in behind you, of the world that lifts you up. It's an appreciation of the energy that has come together as a creative place in you. Because Source created you in its image. And if you're looking for twin flames and soulmates and all these other superpowers, you have to believe in the divine. If you believe in the divine, you have a connection to something higher than yourself. It doesn't, you're not a little tiny ant in a farm somewhere out in left field. You're not this evolution of accidents. You're something important. You may be the point of a pen, but that pen writes as you live. So most relationships fail, especially twin flames, because twin flames are about identifying. Soulmates are about identifying. The divine purpose to partners about identifying the weaknesses, the strengths, and building those and facing those and finding a foundation despite that. It's a wake-up call. It's a catalyst. It is a holy hallelujah. How the hell do I get through this? But I will do it. But as you remember, love doesn't run. Love doesn't chase. Love is. Fear runs. Fear chases. Love and anger don't hold the same space. If you are angry at someone or if you, lo if you love someone, they can't hold the same space. Love and hate are not opposite emotions. Hate is the lack of emotion, the lack of respect, the indulgent self-nature of narcissism because you believe that how could anyone do this to you, of all people, you, the special person. And it's not true because love sits in a place that says, I love you. I let you go. I let you grow. And if you return to me, like that beautiful bird story, it's released from the cage. If you return from being captive and you sit on my banister or my balcony and sing to me freely, what a beautiful experience. But I will not captivate you. I will not capture you to hold it. And much of this has been influenced by the Calvinists. We already know that. Shame and blame have been the major battle in self-love. Establishing worth outside of yourself, waiting for reward in heaven. Well, the reward is here. Like Anita Mujani said, heaven is here. And what are you going to do? You've been given everything you need here. You have a soul-filled garden, and what are you doing with it? Does God really need to give you something better? A world with no sin. A world with no involvement of a balance. You can't find it yourself, so you're waiting for the reward for someone to give it to you. Work with what you've got. You'll be there soon enough. Stop focusing on what's forward and focus on what's right now. I do this daily, and it is difficult. Yes, it is, but it is a daily doing. And when you open up Pandora's box, you have to push forward, or it will pulverize you. Don't sit in the knowledge that you are now self-awakened and try to ignore it. Try to sit with it. And don't try to persecute people. Don't try to pulverize other people because you're holding strong in a situation. Allow it to flow through you or it will destroy you. If your twin runs, so to speak, as the label, as the idea goes, let them. It's like in fishing. When the fish runs... 
If you fight it, it will break the line and be forever gone. I would rather have a friend of 30 years than one wonderful signal flare of a year. Because that is the place of love. Because love learns and allows and grows. Love is not compartmentalized. So all of you people, how do you do it? How do you get compassion for yourself that enables you to witness this world around you and still accept it, still care about it, still be empathetic, still be gentle and tender and have a generosity of spirit? There's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways. And this is a way that you can start to love the people in your life to help from the outside in, tell the people that are in your life right now about how brilliant they are, how bold they are, how loving they are. Be as authentic as possible. Give people your real energy, your real love. And scary it is. It's scary for me. I know it's very scary for you. But don't confuse authenticity by sharing complaint or resentment or pettiness. Don't confuse love and authenticity by allowing negativity to dominate through resentment or through delirium of negative involvement. If you have an honest question about something, involve it. Go there. But to have a love, to love, to be in love, I've got three words. Listen, love, and allow. So don't waste your time and energy thinking about how someone needs to change. Don't waste your time and energy thinking about what it would be if they were different. Don't waste your time and energy thinking about, well, if it, if it was a different way, it would work out. Because all of that really is chuck it in the fucking bucket. And I said that fast, so don't get, <laughs> don't get in trouble. Chuck it in the fucking bucket. <laughs> that means if you can't change it, don't worry about it. If it don't challenge what you can't change. Because it only creates chaos and it destroys both. And remember, you don't have to understand someone. If someone's in your life, mother, brother, father, friend, lover, when they make a decision, if that person runs or if that person chases, you don't have to understand it. You just have to respect that choice. You just have to respect their voice and continue to accept them. But if it doesn't go with you, if it doesn't jive with you, move forward out of it. Pull away. Find a new way. A true warrior doesn't go to war. A true warrior opens a door to create a new way or moves away. Like in Aikido, the way of circles, the way of allowing energy to pass so that you are always in a non-opposition. You're just in a flow. In a flow. Because even the people that hurt you have value. Even the people that have come into your life, your separation, your destruction, your catalyst, these people, anyone that's hurt you, harmed you, or made you mad has a value because just like that test in college, it's allowing you to see where you're at. And I'm not political, but whenever someone takes a political position and there's opposition, but they are there, it is the pulling the band-aid off. It is the moment that we get to see okay, maybe we're not where I thought. Maybe it's not how I thought. Let me work on it. It's about value. Because when you can see the value in something, when you can see the divine intelligence, the importance of how everything is the ocean, vulnerability is much easier. And then use mantras, use meditation, use yoga, use self-encouragement. If you're in a foxhole, You've already got a friend in you. Because self-love is about trusting and honoring truth of yourself. It's about nourishing your mind, your body, your soul. It's about taking care of the vessel, making yourself as whole as possible. This is your temple. Hello? Owning your thoughts, owning your opinions. Don't let others sway you because of what they need or desire. Stand your ground. But understand and respect that you and your choices and your truth are yours. The world around you doesn't have to agree and accept it, but it's not your purpose to yell from the rooftops. It's just your purpose to be you. And another part of self-love is daring to believe that you are capable 
of being your best self and seeing that version of your best self and choosing to see good rather than seeing bad. There's enough bad in the world. And I will say, where we're at right now today in the world, there's more good, there's more should, there's more could than a thousand years ago. There's more freedom, there's more food, there's more opportunity, there's more connection than there was a thousand years ago. There's more protection for the people than there was a thousand years ago. Don't believe me, look at history. How long ago was it that women couldn't vote? How long ago was it that my wonderful brothers and sisters were enslaved? How long ago? We are breaking ground and moving forward and planting seeds, the seeds we all plant together as a group, as waves crashing upon the shore this year, 2018, they may not see the full harvest for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, but they will. They will. Because the seeds of our forefathers were planted 100 years ago, and they finally are harvesting now. So don't always look for the bad. Look for the capable. Look for what you can achieve. Don't get down. Get excited. And accept yourself. Day one, mirror work. Accept yourself. See yourself. You got stretch marks. You got scars. I've got scars. I see those as a banner of I am here and I'm a human being and I'm alive. And self-love will help you to create a beautiful relationship with the people around you because it gives you courage. It gives you a certain authenticity. And authenticity doesn't mean that your truth is the truth of everyone. Authenticity doesn't mean that what you say is okay with everyone. Authenticity means you're being yourself. But it allows you to be bigger, better, kinder, more generous, more giving, and to dream. It allows you to stop focusing on negativity and to be present in the possibility that you can do it. You can realize your way through it. Being playful, having peace, having happiness, having positivity is your purpose. Allowing that child inside to be alive because that child in you, that inner child, my twin flame, following people, the soulmate searchers, the divine purposed people, that child inside is closer to source than you are today as an adult trying to do it alone. So start emanating confidence and happiness. Understand that you are a magnet. Are you attracting good or bad? Happy or sad? Are you living in a place with judgment and pretense? Or are you living in a place that is about nourishment and being vibrant and allowing people to be themselves? Are you in the world and not of the world? Or has the world taken you down? Start telling yourself what you think about yourself. Start telling yourself about love. People can say it's crazy. People can, oh yes, only schizophrenic people talk to themselves. No. That you have a voice inside. You have a voice in your head and a voice in your heart. Both of them are conflicting. The angel on your shoulder and the devil. Your heart is the angel. Your head can be the devil because logic is not about love. Logic weighs the pros and cons. Love says, just be, just be. So start telling yourself, about love. Be who you want to be with. Be the person you needed when you needed someone. Focus less on winning. So focus less on approval. Focus less, less on saving the world. Focus on seeing you in it. Give yourself permission to live. Distance yourself from those who bring you down. Circle yourself with love and light. Forgive that past. Stop protecting the past by destroying the present. Forgive yourself, but for, by forging ahead. Start making the changes you need to know you need to make. Because there's a voice in your heart that says let go. There's a voice in your heart that says don't hold on. There's a voice in your heart that tells you when to move forward. There's a voice in your heart that tells you when to fight. But you're not fighting to go to war. You're fighting to be present to have a pulse. Embrace those mistakes, even the ones you haven't made yet. Understand, love has nothing to do with trust. Love has nothing to do with how hard you work for it. And then loving will become a lot easier. 
And then your relationship will have a lot less pressure because you know you love that person even if they failed you. You know they will fail you because it's inevitable. Everything dies, breaks, or goes away. And show gratitude daily to yourself, to someone else. Live a life of compassion. Do something that makes you happy, but do something else that will increase someone's happiness. These are daily doings. Give yourself a chance to explore the opportunity of being present and happy, even if the person you love is nowhere around. Because if you love yourself, if you love the other person and they're living a happy life, you should love that. Allow them. That should increase your happiness tenfold, or otherwise what you have for them isn't love. It's possessive. It is not healthy. Focus on writing, focus on reading, focus on being creative, and stop allowing this circumvision of the internet to take from you your creativity. If you can use social media or the internet as a place of coming together, yes. If you can use it as a place for creativity, yes. But don't get caught into the negativity, the bullying, and all these things that go along with it. Pay close attention to the life you're living and live the best life you can because you don't have a lot of time here. Your life isn't about anything other than being alive and loving. And don't live a life of distraction. Don't be the baby that the dad said, no, no, don't cry. Look over here. Look at this. Look at the toy. Look at the toy. Don't cry. Feel. Forge ahead. Loosen up. Dance. Stop living a life of self-pity. Just live a life like you are alive. Let music be your guide. Open yourself fully. Open yourself fully. There's another quote that I really, really like. I wanted to read that. By Lauren Oliver. I wonder if this is how people always get closer. They heal each other's wounds. They repair the broken skin. Lauren Oliver from Pandemonium. We are always repairing something. But let's start loving it as well. And yes, these ascension symptoms or twin flame symptoms are all symptoms. The discomfort, the aches, the pains, the headaches, the bursts of energy running through you, the palpitations, the high vibrations, the quick shifting joy to love from depression to, <laughs> depression to despair, that bipolar becoming of self, this strong yearning to return home that intense dream, the unusual sleep, the heightened sensitivity, the over-empathy, the loud sounds being completely on, feeling everything around you, the coming and going of relationships, the breaking of all boundaries, the crushing of borders, the removal of barriers. You're waking up. We all are. Because the ocean is the motion, and the ocean is waking up. It's been waking up for a while now. 2018, plant your seeds. My book is out. Go to the link. Look for it. I'm excited. If you need personal help, let me know. I've got an awesome staff that has created some wonderful opportunities to be your best self. I went... 10 days mirror work, 10 minutes a day will change your life. It's no cost. Or if you want to go a step further, we can do a 21-day program and you can work and we'll work together, you and me, hand in hand, side by side. Either way, I'm here for you. I'm just trying to create safe space so you have a chance to see your true self. Remember, subscribe. Click the bell on the button so you're able to know when it's time to go when we're talking live. If you need help, contact me. Everything is in the description below. I'm here for you because I'm here for me. I'm experiencing self-love, trying to see this through to help you to see yourself. Once you're able to see yourself, seeing other people is a lot easier. Peace, light, and love, and I will see you on the other side.